What happens many times when a new expat comes to the Philippines or Thailand or anywhere else and is going to be staying for a while, maybe staying three months, six months, maybe permanent. There's many things that can happen. There's these sort of like paths that uh, some are good, some are bad. Uh, we're going to talk about one of the bad ones today. And one of the things that can come up is a situation where it all seems to be a good idea at the beginning. But as we're going to take a look at here, if you're going to do it, at least know what you're getting into. So the situation is a guy moves to the Philippines. Like I said, he's going to be here not just for a week or two weeks, but he's going to be here for quite some time. Like I said, three months, six months or more. So he gets all settled in, starts exploring the island, starts uh, dating. So he meets a Filipina. Two or three dates later, everything is hot and heavy. It's really going great. She's fun to hang out with. Again, it's been like maybe two weeks that he's known her, maybe three weeks. But things are going really good, and, and he's really interested in her. He's not interested in dating uh, a bunch of other girls right now. He really does think, well, hey, this is this is awesome. Every time I go out, I want to go out with her. Here's, here's where the next step is the most crucial. This is where the mistake is made. The guy thinks to himself, well, every time we go out, we got to arrange transportation and it would be so much more convenient and I would have so much more access to her if I just moved her into my apartment. And that's, that's where everything starts going south. It seems like such a good idea. It seems efficient. You know, why deal with all this commuting and having to meet places and her being at her place, you know, most of the week when she could be there sleeping in your room every night? Seems like a great idea. It is very easy to get a Filipina, when you're a foreigner, to move into your place. We're talking 99% success rate. You ask 50 different Filipinas that you've dated for a while, for two weeks, you ask them, hey, would you like to move into my place? Immediately, it's just like, let me get a bag. Let me grab some clothes. You know, because the idea of living with you, you're going to pay all the bills. You're going to pay the rent. You're going to pay for all the restaurants and the groceries and whatever other things you might want. You're going to have probably great air conditioning, maybe even access to a pool. Uh, for her, this is like, you know, asking you, hey, would you like to stay six weeks at a resort for free? <laughs> you see? So it's like, it's a no-brainer. Getting them moved in is the easy part. But here's what happens. You move her in. You've only known her maybe three weeks, a month at the most. Most guys, I don't know why, well, I know why, but most guys will just move her in within two weeks of knowing her. You know, and yeah, okay, so maybe they had six or seven dates in those two weeks, but you know what? She's still a stranger. You don't know anything about her. And yes, living with somebody, you get to know them. And that brings us to part B of this plan. So you've known her for two, three weeks and everything is just awesome every time you go out. So it's like, hey, why don't you just move in with me? And she's like, okay. She grabs a bag and she moves in. And now realize one thing, and this may not matter to you, but once you have her moved in, she's not going to just sit there while you bring some other girl home or you go out and like, well, I'm going out. I got a date. No, that, that forget about all that. So you just gave up your homestead. She is now the woman in the house. Now, if you're okay with that, great. Because again, she's awesome. Great to be around. But then a month goes by and now the, the real her starts Starts coming out. Eh, maybe she can hang in there for a month. Statistically, what I have found is that within three months, and I've said this so many times, three months or less, that's when you start realizing who you're dealing with. Because when you first meet her, remember, she is a stranger. You don't know her any more than the guy that's changing your oil. You don't, you don't know them. You don't know anything about them. You know, you don't, you don't know if she has a brother who's a drug addict. You don't know anything about her. Uh, you don't even know if she really doesn't have any kids or not. So go ahead, you move her in. And then usually within six weeks, I mean, most do not make it past three months. I would say 85% of these new relationships you start, I would say 85% don't even make it to three months. You know, a lot of them within six weeks, you're looking at her and you're thinking, man, I don't want her here anymore. 
I don't like how she does this. Uh, she's asking me for more money. She's jealous. She's, you know, whatever the, the issues are that finally come out now that you're living together, you're just looking at her like, man, I've, I've had enough of this. It was fun in the beginning, but the novelty has worn off. This is not somebody I want to marry. It's not even somebody I want for a girlfriend. And now, as easy it was to, to move them in, if you're lucky, it'll be easy to move them out. But what you have to be prepared for is that it's not going to be easy. She may put up a lot of resistance. Again, her lifestyle just took a huge bump up, moving from maybe she was staying in a boarding house with three of her other workmates or whatever, you know, where they didn't have air con, they just had a fan and they, the bathroom was down the hall. She went from that to living in your condo with air con, you know, security and dining out all the time. There's a good chance she's not going to want to give that up easily. So getting them out, you have to keep this in mind. There's a very good chance there's going to be drama. You're going to tell her, you know, uh, this just isn't working out. I'm really not happy with this situation. I, th I think it's time we just both go our own ways. So I'll help you. You don't have a carry-on suitcase, I'll buy you one. Because uh, by this time, believe me, what happens is they move in with a little small bag of stuff, maybe even just a, a one of those little carry purses of stuff, you know, a few few changes of clothes. But as the weeks go by, they're going to bring and, and have you buy more stuff, more clothes, more stuff, more shampoo products, more. Before you know it, by the time she leaves, she's got six times more stuff in your apartment than when she first got there. So, you know, you tell her, this isn't working out. I'll get you... A, a carry-on suitcase. We'll put all your stuff in there. I'll give you some money to go get a new boarding house. I mean, you don't want to be the jackass who just kicks her out on the street with 200 pesos. You know, don't be that guy. You're the one, it was your idea to have them move in. So at least be responsible enough and decent enough to help them transition out. You know, pay for their transportation, maybe help them get into a boarding house. And we're, we're not talking about setting up their whole life. And we're talking about maybe 100, 150 bucks at most just to help them with some transportation, you know, move back to the island where they were living with their parents or whatever it is. But see, here's, here's the thing I want you to keep in mind. When you move a woman in, you're basically, by default, taking responsibility for her. So now that you want to get rid of her, which is really what this boils down to, you're responsible to get her out to another place where she's got housing and whatever. This is why I am so against also, and we're talking so far, she's living in the same city. Okay, so she goes back to her boarding house. Maybe that was a hundred bucks a month, you know, so you give her enough money for that. And okay, we're done. And hopefully it all works out smooth. Now, if, if she's not going to leave unless security takes her out kicking and screaming, well, then you got that to deal with. Again, you want to be responsible because by default, it's your situation to handle. You need to get her out and at least on her feet. It would be really crass, to put it nicely, to just say, well, I don't want you here anymore. You got two minutes to pack your stuff and then just push her out the door. I mean, that, that's very you know low-level behavior. So before you go deciding to move some woman in to your place, think about it. What is your game plan to get her moved out? It's going to cost you some money if you're going to be decent about it. All you really owe her is maybe a month, a month's worth of boarding house, which again, is not very expensive, or the transportation to put her on a ferry or even a plane to get back to her parents' house or her parents' island or whatever. And that's it. If, if she's good for a month in the future after leaving your place, as far as I'm concerned, she's back on her own. Now, that's if she's in the same city. I have talked to so many guys and they say, oh, I'm going to move to the Philippines and I live in Cebu, but I've been talking to this girl. She's over in Cagayan de Oro. And I've been talking to this other girl and she's up in Manila. I've been talking to this other girl and she's way over in Iloilo. And when I get to Cebu, I'm going to ask the one in Cagayan de Oro to move in with me. Okay, bad idea. You know, we call it importing. Because again, when you, when you fly some Filipina, you put her on a plane and she travels several islands to come and live with you, now you're responsible for her. Doesn't matter that you're not married. 
married, doesn't matter that you're even boyfriend, girlfriend, she's now your responsibility. So if she gets sick, guess who's going to take care of her? Guess who's going to pay her medical bills? If you got to get rid of her, if you got to have her move out because she's being really difficult, things came up, you're the one that's got, you're the one who got her on a plane over there. You got to put her and pay for a plane to send her back home. So this whole idea of importing, I'm telling you, it's, it's such a bad idea and moving them in. Now I myself, 49 years that I lived in the United States, I never moved in a woman into my place that I wasn't married to. I don't want the responsibility of some woman moving in my place. I don't want that. If I'm going to do that, it's because we're married and I've taken on that responsibility. So in the Philippines, in 12 years, I only had three Filipinas move in with me. The first two, including the third, my rule was I will not let a woman move in with me unless the purpose is to get to know her because I'm already more than 50% convinced this might be one that I'm willing to marry. So the only other two that ever lived with me, I had reached that criteria. I said to myself, this seems like marriage material. Now with the first two, it just didn't work out. With the third, which is now my wife, you know, now we're married, we're together, it all worked out. But what I did not do, any of the other women that I ever dated, the most they would stay was maybe the weekend. And I always made it clear, you know, hey, why don't you come Friday after work and then you can head back to work Monday morning. I always made it clear, you know, you're not moving in, you know, you're coming to visit. It's going to be awesome, but you're just going to stay overnight or you're just going to stay for the weekend. You know, I got stuff to do. I always kept them at arm's length outside my door 12 years. Just I just stuck to that rule. And meanwhile, I was helping like my buddy who calls me on the phone one day, actually it was about seven in the evening, and he'd already been having so many problems with the Filipina that he moved in. And he called me and I can hear her screaming in the background. She's going ballistic. And he's like, what do I do? What do I do? How do I get rid of this woman? I told her to leave and I keep telling her and she won't move out and she won't pack her things and this and that. And I actually stayed on the phone with him for about 45 minutes and walked him through. And basically, since he was in a condo and they had security downstairs, I said, okay, this is what you do. Get on the, they had like a phone, you know, a landline in the room that went to the front desk and security. So I told him, okay, get hold of security. He did. And I'm on the phone with him the whole time. And I told him, okay, now you tell the Filipina, I'm about to talk to security. This is your last chance to pack your things or security is going to come up and drag you out. So she began packing her stuff. And I told him, I said, tell security, you have a situation with an unwelcome guest who is not on the lease. So he tells the security that they come up. From that point out, he was golden. You know, now that security showed up, you know, and said, ma'am, you need to leave. You, you don't live here. You know, he was the third party that basically made it clear to her, you got to go. So then I, afterwards, after that whole situation, I told him, okay, now what you do is you go down, they got three pizzas for, I think it's $4.99 over at Greenwich or Greenwich, whatever that is. I said, this is what you do. You go down there, you get three pizzas for 499 pesos and you give it to the security guard and you, you remind him, okay, see this picture? This woman is not to come past this door. She is not welcome at my place. So that's what he did. Gave the security guard the pizza. It was clear. And anytime, I don't even know that she ever attempted to come back, but if she had, security knew she's not welcome. But see, this is the kind of thing you may run into if you start inviting a complete stranger to live with you thinking, oh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, it will be awesome for about three weeks. So I guess if I'm going to leave you with anything, it's this. Don't do it. And don't make it even worse by importing a girl from two, three islands away, flying her on a plane. You haven't, I mean, you've, you've video chatted, but you've never even gone on a date with her. But in order to spend time with her, you're going to fly her in and then just roll the dice and, and have her live with you. She's going to know where all your valuables are. You know, you're going to do all this. 
just because you want a girl living with you? Don't do it. Date women in your area. You don't need to bring them in from three islands away. Whatever city you're living in, even if it's a tiny little town out on a small island, there are more Filipinas within walking and, and jeepney distance than you'll ever have time to date. There's plenty of them. Have them come, visit, but have them go home. Maintain your domain. I've said this before. Maintain your domain. Otherwise, it's just a guess of how much drama you're going to have when it comes time to get them out.